Michael Frankel, joined by Bryce Logan. He's going to be in the feature fight at LFA 77, taking on Jonas Falk. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. I heard that you stepped away from work to be able to do this interview tonight. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I bartend uh, about three or four nights a week, so I took my I took my shift break to come and chat with you guys tonight. All right, that's awesome. Got to thank you for that. And is it crazy to think you're doing an interview in one week? Around this time, you'll have already fought probably by this time a week from now. Yeah, hopefully, you know, we're, we're in the back celebrating a victory about a week from now. That's uh, definitely the plan. What do you think about it? What do you think about the fight? Dude, I'm always excited to fight for, for LFA. Any any opportunity that I get, I, I try to jump in there for those guys. I, I just love how they run the organization. Um, about the fight particularly, you know, I didn't um, I didn't look into the opponent too much. I um I know he's uh, I think this is his LFA debut. I could be wrong, um, but uh, you know, I just I just know that I'm ready and I've been getting ready for this one since April. I kind of wanted to fight again over the summer, but nothing worked out. So I've been. I've been training hard since April, my last LSA fight, just getting ready. And, you know, I didn't really care who it was. I was just uh, anxious to step back in there. I think it'll be a good fight, though. You know, he's got a, he's got a good record, and he's, he's a, I think he's got a seven or an eight fight win streak right now. So I'm excited to step in there and test myself against a high level opponent. And I mean, LFA, even back when it was RFA, you fought for them off and on, I believe, most of your career. So the promotion really yeah. does hold a special place with you. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, like I've I've taken a hiatus here and there, not not for any reason on their part. You know, I just I got an opportunity to jump in with Bellator, and I lost a close split with them. And then immediately following that, I got a title shot for CES MMA out in Rhode Island. So I was like, man, you know, nothing that LFA did to to scare me away. I just got a couple of really nice opportunities from other promotions, and I decided to jump on those and take them. And super appreciative of LFA because they always welcome me back. You know, it's no hard feelings there. Uh, they want what's best for the fighters, I feel. And if you get a good opportunity, they're the first ones to invite you to take it, you know? So uh, um, I'll love with LFA. I always appreciate working for those guys. And talk about those last two fights. I mean, a close split decision. How big of a fight was that in Bellator? And how do you look back on that one? Man, you know, um, that was such a fun fight. I fought DeMarquez Jackson. He trains down a hard knock, 365, with Henry Hoop. So, I mean, he's training with killers every day, Kamara Luzman, UFC champion, and the laundry list of other dudes that are competing at a super high level right now. So to step in there and, you know, a fight that I, I feel like really 30 seconds in the third round kind of determined it. He got a takedown, but I was able to reverse him with about a minute left and finish with some ground and pound on top. But, you know, uh, split decision loss, but I learned a lot in that fight. You know, I, I always coming up in the sport was like, man, am I good enough to compete with these guys? You know, do I really belong on this level? And that one for me just kind of solidified like, hey, dude, you're a tough dude and you're a lot to deal with as well. So I actually gained a lot of confidence in a loss because I was able to step in there for a big time promotion and put on a put on a good fight and come out with a close loss. You know, some people thought I won, some people thought I didn't. I didn't get too wrapped up in it because I knew I had gotten better and I actually drew a lot of confidence from that fight in itself. And then you can't get away from the split decisions, the most recent outing, back in the LFA cage of victory, Kenneth Glenn. That one also, the judges gave a split decision. Yeah, the judges gave a split on that one. Personally, you know, I don't get too wrapped up in whether they scored a split or a unanimous. When that fight got over, I had no doubt in my mind that I had won the fight. I, um, I, was, I was a little surprised by one judge scoring it for him, but... You know, I'm not gonna not gonna hold a grudge. You know, some of those guys have never competed before. I just knew, in my heart of hearts, when that fight was over, I knew I had won. So I didn't. I wasn't too wrapped up in how they scored it. But it did show me, like, hey, like, even when you think you won, you need to go out there and separate yourself because you never know what a judge is thinking. You never know which way they're looking at a fight. So for me, if I can take something from that, it's that when I feel like I'm in control, I need to do a little bit more to separate myself, or a little bit more to maybe finish the fight to take it out of the judge's hands. If you go look on your Twitter, there's a little highlight of that fight up. It looks like almost like a no look punch that you threw. Um, just a lot of fainting. You know, I I I, I, um, I knew he was a counter puncher, so for me it was it was more of like a 
I'm trying to draw out his counter punches and then counter his counters without getting, you know, the, that's the simplest way I can put it. Um, I knew he was a strong counter puncher, so I wanted to get him with some hard faith to get him to throw his counters so I could then find my way inside and land my shots. But um, you can't, he, I hit him with some hard shots, and all, all credit to him, man. I thought, you know, some of those shots most other people would be hurt by, and he, he walked right through him. He kept coming. He was just a, he was a tough, well-built dude. So I was um, I was impressed that he was able to take some of the shots that I put on him and, and keep fighting. You mentioned for Jonas coming up here at LFA 77 that you hadn't done too much studying of him. Is that normally what you do for uh, normally how you handle your studying of opponents, not doing it, worrying more about yourself? Um, You know, you have to, but at the same time, if there's film out there, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to take a peek if it's there, but you don't want to get too wrapped up in, in what a guy does in one fight because matchups make the fights, man, and he might have a totally different game plan against one guy than he would against another. So if you can get a hold of a few fights and watch them, you can maybe get some tendencies, but you know, I've, I've always had more success just making sure that I'm prepared and I'm ready, and then I look at his style more than necessarily what he does. You know, is this guy a grappler, is he a striker? And then I kind of build my game plan around that. Um, try to train my reactions, you know, and just be ready for anything. Instead of, well, we're going to go out here and do this exact combination at this exact time. And fights are fluid, man. You know, so it's really hard to, it's really hard to plan out what you're going to, what you're going to use and what you're going to hit. We just try to train, train our reactions and be ready, ready for anything. It's kind of uh, more of our game plan. How much video were you, footage, whatever, were you able to come across for Jonas? I found a couple of fights. Um, some of them were a little older, back from 2016, 2017. I think the most recent one I found was from September of last year, so it was almost a full year ago. So you don't want to put too much stock into that. You don't know what, how much improvement he's made over the last year and, and whatnot. But um, I, so I found about two or three uh, decent fights on there that I was able to take a little bit from. But just a quick peek to, to grab some tendencies, and then we go from there. It's been five months since your last one. What have you been working on there in the gym? Um, I've uh, I actually picked up. Believe it or not, I'm a white belt in gi jiu jitsu. I start off. I've been doing no gi for about eight years, nine years since I started fighting, but I never, I never made the leap and grabbed the gi. So over the last, over the last five months, I started gi jiu jitsu. I'm actually, actually a white belt still, but um, a lot of the no gi game transferred over and just playing with those grips. But it little, made me a little more solid positionally and a, a little more solid with my technique, more so than relying on explosiveness that you do in no gi all the time. And then um, I'm always always working on my striking, man. I'm always trying to grow my striking because every fight starts on your feet, every round starts on your feet. And if, if today MMA nowadays, if you're not if you're not capable of holding your own on your feet, you're going to get ate up. You need to learn how to defend takedowns. Some dudes are great strikers, so I feel, I've always felt if you can't hold your own on your feet, you're you're just waiting to get passed by in this sport. And I believe I heard it's four years now. For the last four years, you've been in Arizona. Yeah, come uh, three years. Uh, so January first will be the uh, exact exactly three years. I moved out here on New Year's Day, about two about two years and nine months ago. So yeah, end of the year will be three years. How do you look back on that decision? Uh, it's the best thing I ever did. You know, I was up in South Dakota. I had great coaches up there, but you can only grow so much if you don't have top-notch partners pushing you to, to grow. You know, you kind of get set in your ways, and you're, you're the baddest dude in the gym, and that's not a great environment for growth. You know, you know what works for you in those situations, and you don't really have to develop or come up with anything new. I've been sparring over at Fight Ready a little bit this camp as well with uh, some of the new guys they've gotten over there. And it's just it's not a good look for me. They've got a lot of UFC guys, a lot of Bellator veterans. Uh, you know, Henry Corrales is over there. It's a car close. They've just got a... They've got a who's who of guys competing at the top level right now, and I just wanted to challenge myself in my sparring rounds this camp, and they were uh, they were gracious enough to let me in and, and let me spar with their guys, so I was really appreciative of the guys over at Fight Ready for that as well. For everybody else around the country, can you describe to them a little bit of what that Arizona combat sports scene is like? There's so many great gyms out there. Yeah, I mean, there's guys everywhere. There's coaches. They got the MMA lab up in Glendale, which is um, Benson Henderson's gym, the one he's been at his entire career. Um, and then you've got uh, Fight Ready, which is uh, Sehudo's home gym, which is 
been blowing up the last six months. Just a ton of guys rolling in there. Eddie Scott is over as the uh, as the head striking coach. Santino DeFranco is the head coach there, and then they've got uh, Alan Beers, who's um, a well-respected boxing coach down here in Arizona as well. And then I myself trained with Bader and um, Jair Lorenko at uh, Power MMA. So there's you know two or three gyms. We've got the Bellator double champion down here. We've got a UFC double champion down here in Arizona with Henry Cejudo. Ryan Bader obviously being the double champ of Bellator at light heavyweight and heavyweight. And, you know, like I said, there's just the, a who's who of guys competing at the top level down here. So it's a, the weather's always nice. The sun's always shining. There's no snow. Makes it easy to get out and hit the gym. But it's just a, it's a great environment for growth and, and learning and just being able to challenge yourself every day and see different guys that, that maybe are better at a different discipline than you are. And you can learn something from them. And then you can go and you know, roll your next round with this guy that's an expert with with this submission, and you can figure out, you know, how he got you with that submission, how he set it up, and everything. There's just so many guys that have so much good insight to draw from, and, you know, it's been a very, very important move for me over the last two and a half years. I've grown a lot. How big of a confidence boost is it for you seeing what Ryan Bader's been accomplishing? Man, it's, it's awesome, and I'm happy for him. You know, it's a... Uh, he left he was a little bit of a bad taste in his mouth. I don't know if they necessarily valued him at the level that he valued himself. So to see him have all this great success since he left their promotion, just uh, I draw a sense of pride from that, and I'm happy for him, man. It's awesome watching, watching someone you train with every day that seems so highly. Next Friday night, how does Bryce Logan grab the attention? You know, it's uh, I, I feel like I'm due for a knockout. I, I want to get in there, and I want to get my hands on him, and you know, it's, um, I need to start making a little noise again, and I think now is as good a time as any. I've been training hard. I'm ready to go, and I think I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to score a knockout. Does, are you motivated to finish him, seeing he's a guy with a good number of finishes, and recently your victories have come by decision? Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I want to I wanna get a little a little clout back out there with my name. You know, I had, I had a seven-fight win streak, and then I took a couple of chances and, and took some close losses. And I'm just, I'm ready to uh, kind of announce my name back onto the scene. I've always felt like I'm one of the better unsigned 155 pounders in the nation. And I just need to do what I'm capable of doing to make everybody else realize that as well. And we're looking forward to seeing Bryce Logan prove it in the feature fight at LFA 77 up at the Mystic Lake Casino next Friday night. Sir, thank you for spending your break with me. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Last but not least, were there people that you needed to shout out to or thank? Yeah, for sure. You know, I just want to thank all my training partners, both at Power MMA and at Fight Ready. Um, I want to thank my one of my main sponsors, Josh Howe with Team Howe. He's always been behind me, taking care of me, making sure that I have what I need to be able to keep pursuing this dream. And, you know, uh, my sponsor, Oren at KO Reps, has taken really good care of me, helped me hook me up with the right sponsors as well. So I just want to thank all those guys that do the legwork behind the scenes to get me into the cage. It takes a lot more a lot more than you guys realize to get me there healthy and ready to go. So just a ton of people. I'm sure I missed some, but anybody that helps me out, I just want to say thanks. I appreciate you guys. And everybody go on Twitter. It's at Bryce Logan twenty three so you can follow him. Again, sir, thank you for the time. Thank you, man.